Hello and welcome to today's video. Today I am doing a review of a pen from Lamy that I actually think uh, doesn't quite get enough attention. I think it's got some good things going for it. Um, that pen is the Lamy Logo Fountain Pen. It's a pretty simple pen. It's a uh, pretty much on their sort of more affordable end of their scale. Uh, but I think, as I said, it's got some good things going for it. It uses their standard uh, cartridge converter system. It uses their standard uh, nibs, which you can swap out from things like the Safari or the Vista and all star, things like that. Uh, you can put a gold nib on here if you wanted to. I'm gonna show a writing sample, show a couple of size comparisons, some pros and cons, and then uh, leave you on your merry way. Even before I was deeply deeply back into fountain pens one pen i always carried with me was this which is the lamy logo ballpoint pen now as far as ballpoint pens go i really like the body of this pen um it's robust it's kind of quite available a lot of sort of office supply stores sell this model it's simple it takes a you know an easily accessible and replaceable refill from lamy uh and I just liked the body of the pen. So when I started getting back into fountain pens quite sort of deeply, one of the pens I picked up relatively early on was the fountain pen equivalent. I thought it'd be nice to sort of have the pair of them. Um, and it was a good idea. Um, it's nice to have both. They're both kind of rugged. Uh, but I think that for me, the ballpoint is actually the better pen of the two in a way uh, because sort of the simplicity of it and some of those basic features I think are stronger on the ballpoint. But today we are looking at the fountain pen. So let's talk about the parts and features. So the top of the pen uh, has this sort of black plastic top. It's a stainless steel body. But it's got these plastic ends. Um, the clip is spring loaded in there and it's functional. It's not fancy none of this pen is particularly fancy it's definitely a uh, function over form you get the branding of lamy there on the cap the cap is cylindrical the entire body of the pen is cylindrical uh and then there's no cap or anything it just sort of pops you know it's a snap cap it cap ends there you get the, the second half of the grip section uh, and then the barrel, and then that plastic end there that you post the pen on, which has a couple of little like um, ears and things on it to help post the pen. The pen is just friction posted on there, and it's relatively secure, um, but makes it a fairly usable length, and there's no major step down. The grip section is this sort of ribbed grip, uh, you know, section which on a metal pen can be an advantage because it stops the pen being slippery uh, then it gets a little plastic bit where the pen po uh, caps onto that's where you know the capping mechanism activates and then the standard lamy nib and i've got this in a medium and then the standard once again lamy feed so this is a cartridge converter pen much the same as uh, the others. I have a black Lamy ink cartridge in there at the moment. It comes with a blue cartridge, not a converter, but you can get the standard, um, you know, Lamy converter that fits in this pen. Um, you can't eye drop it. It's got metal parts. This end section actually screws off, so it's definitely not uh, secure. Um, but it is a fairly simple, decent functioning well-constructed pen in the Bauhaus style um, and uh, yeah as I said a, a function over form and uh, I think this actually does a really nice job of that. This is the stainless steel finish uh, and the pen actually comes in a couple of other finishes the main ones being sort of like the black uh, anodized finish and the uh, brushed stainless steel. Traditionally, it comes with the medium or a fine nib on it, um, but as it is that traditional normal Lamy nib system, um, you definitely can swap it out for basically anything from an extra fine, fine, medium, broad, 1.1, 1.5 or 1.9 millimeter nib. And as I said, there are also the gold options or the luxe options which will fit on this because they're all interchangeable. Even the nib that comes on the Emporium, which is a you know pen 10 times the price of this guy, uh, actually will fit on this pen. So the nibs be being interchangeable is a big plus. In terms of price for this pen, in Australia, it retails for like 60 to $70. To put that into context, a Lamy Safari costs 45 to 55 and an All-Star kind of around the 70 to $75 mark, uh, depending on where you go and when you shop. Um, 
So it's priced between the Safari and the All-Star, and I think it's kind of a decent place for it. It is a metal pen. Uh, it has the same nib, all those sorts of things. Uh, but uh, it is, I think, quite a simple pen. In the US, it retails for 35 to 40, and in the UK for 20 pounds. So not a super cheap pen, but certainly not on the expensive end, even for Lamy. Let's look at some size comparisons. The two pens I've pulled up today, one is of course a Lamy Safari. Um, so you see the length is only a bit shorter than the Lamy Safari, but it is a much narrower pen. And a pen that I love in this same sort of design concept is the Muji uh, fountain, aluminium fountain pen, uh, which has some similar size attributes, maybe a tiny bit longer, uh, but generally across the board similar. And the way that it posts into that um, groove on the back gives it the same sort of line when it's posted. But the Lamy Safari is a slightly bigger pen. If we look at them uncapped, you see the Safari is considerably longer. And then when they're posted, they actually come out pretty close. Because the Safari posts quite deeply down the barrel of the pen, whereas the logo just posts onto that black plastic sort of end cap there. As for the specs of the Lamy logo, capped it is 135 millimeters. Uncapped it is 118, which for quick writing sessions is probably going to be okay for most people. There's no like, you know, serious dip down or anything like that. It's well balanced and weighted, uh, and but perhaps a little bit short. When it is posted, it is 161 centimeter uh, millimeters which does you know make it a very very writable length there's not too much extra weight in the cap uh, the panel the whole pen weight is about 18 grams of which 11 is in the body and 7 is in the cap so the balance is okay um, especially as it's not a particularly big pen uh, in terms of the width of the pen though the the main barrel width is 9.5 millimeters and then at its thinnest point within the grooves of the group section it's about 9.3 so they're not particularly deep grooves either, uh, but there is a slight difference there. For the writing sample, I have the standard Clairefontaine paper here. All we have is the Lamy logo fountain pen uh, with a, in this case, a medium steel nib. Uh, and the ink I have in here is Lamy black, which I think is a great black. Um, it's really smooth. It's not wet. I wouldn't say it's a, a super wet writer, but it is putting down quite a nice amount of ink. Um, and yeah, it is smooth. There's very little feedback. Lamy nibs while they i would say that they are relatively consistent you can sometimes get one that is uh, a bit better than the others and i actually think this one's pretty good this one has done a bit of writing over the last couple of years um but i think this nib actually is a pretty good one they are rigid there's no flex um upside down writing or reverse writing is possible um but scratchy and would dry out uh fast writing Occasionally, you see like the ink sort of thin out, but a lot of that is also the pressure on the page and the hand position on the page and all those sorts of things. Generally speaking, Lamy nibs keep up fairly well. The feeds are well designed. They have been honed and, um, you know, sort of tested and tried over a number of decades. They are a pretty solid nib. So as you can see, this writes really well. It writes consistently. Um, the fine nib is not super fine. The difference between the fine and the medium is not super pronounced, uh, but they are pretty decent sort of everyday writing size nibs. Now for pros and cons, uh, we'll start with the cons. Firstly, a subjective one, it is a slim pen. Some people really like that, um, some people do not. I actually find on a pen like this with the purpose that I use it for, the slimness can be an advantage. Um, an occasional issue I have had with this pen is a flow issue. Uh, not just when I'm writing like where I show that sort of skipping out slightly, but just occasionally it dries out just a little bit. Uh, not a lot, not enough to sort of stop it writing, but you do notice just occasionally, uh, you know, 
whether it's an airflow distribution thing, I don't know, but occasionally it just dries out a tiny bit. Third uh, con is the Australian pricing, I think is slightly out of whack with the international pricing. Um, we find that across a broad range of products, not just pens and stationery, but generally speaking, um, but the conversion of the pound, for instance, the 20 pound pen to a 60 to 70 dollar Australian pen is just out of whack. Uh, that conversion should make it 40 to 45 dollars, not 60 to 70. Um, so it is a big pricing difference. So if you can get it from overseas, as much as I want to support my Australian retailers, um, it is cheaper from overseas. That's the plain, simple truth of it. The last con is another one of these ones that could be a pro or a con, and that is the grip. For me, I don't mind it. I don't mind that textured grip, but some people really do not like textured grips. What that does mean is that it doesn't get slippery. You always have purchase on the pen. You're never going to you know, feel it get running away from you, like, say, the Lamy Studio with one of those um, metal sections. Um, so pros and Definitely pros and cons. Um, the couple of big uh, pros I think this pen has, firstly, is the nib system, the Lamy nibs being replaceable and all of that sort of stuff. Um, easy to slip on and slip off. Lots of videos on how to do that online. Um, it, In fact, I'm, I have one to make in you know, the next little while. Um, but it is being able to go from an extra fine you know, in the standard nibs through abroad and then in the calligraphy nibs, which are available in the, you know, on their own or with the Lamy Joy fountain pen, uh, going from a 1.1 through to a 1.9 millimeter. It gives you a lot of options, but realistically a pen like this is going to be used for sort of note, fast note taking, maybe sketching on the go, um, those sorts of things. So the round nibs, the extra fine through to broad are probably realistically more what you're gonna find on these pen, people using on these pens, I should say. Although that's, you know, everyone has their particular flavor they love. The That portability of this pen, having it on the go is actually for me the biggest strength. This is a great pen to throw in your bag or your purse or attached to the side of a notebook. It, it's caps very, very securely. The clip is functional. It's a robust pen because it is made of metal. It's slim, it's sturdy, it's reliable. It's very, very portable. That is its biggest, biggest, biggest pro. And the fact that it's not a super expensive pen, you're not paying into the hundreds of dollars or you know whatever for this pen, it does mean that you can you know, sort of have a fountain pen at a reasonable price that you are able to trust in a robust situation. Uh, from a brand like Lamy, who have their converters and their inks and their cartridges and stuff widely, widely available. Um, so having something like the pair of the ballpoint pen and the fountain pen uh, is a lovely option to have. Um, both reliable, both sturdy. I hope you found this video about the Lamy logo fountain pen helpful, uh, useful, all that sort of, and interesting. Please give it a thumbs up and like and subscribe and all that sort of stuff. Thank you for watching and supporting the channel. It's your support that makes these videos possible. If you'd like to get in touch, use any of the platforms listed below, or you can email me, which is also listed down below. If you've got products you think I should be looking at, or if there's a way you'd like to support the channel in a sort of a more, you know, physical way uh, by sponsoring a review or providing an item for review or whatever the case may be. I would really love to hear from you. As I said, the support of my viewers makes this channel possible. Uh, you're all wonderful and I am so grateful that you are on this journey with me. In the meantime, enjoy your pens, enjoy writing, and I'll talk to you soon.